Hey, I'm Kev K. Mr. Cole, welcome back to MotoGP18. Has Mayo did not quite get the result he wanted in Austria. Can he have much better race pace around the fast flowing Silverstone circuit? So here goes Mayo for the first of three possible qualifying efforts. Round this long lap time wise to make 5.6, one of the longest on the calendar. Because he's got the best axis markers. Mark VDS at the top. We well, you know that's probably going to go down to a 203 maybe. Oh my, so let's see what Mayo can do. Spani is a decent start. Three tenths down after the first set or three tenths up, should I say. Well, he's normally been good in the past as well on board this. Not just his KTM, but on board. Moto3 bike in the past. But it's a bit disappointing in the home race for KTM last time out with Mario Binder and Olivier are not quite being right up there battling for the win or even the podium places on home turf and they're looking to bounce back on a track which should be pretty good for them I feel especially for Mario but I expect to see Olivier bounce back he's never really had two off weekends so far this season and an off weekend for Olivia is batting for the top five this season that's how good he's been how dominant he is in the championship at the moment it's Mayo four tenths down after the second sector we'll see if he has a pattern here with the sector sent is a bit down after the first set, so six tenths back. So this is a 206 at the moment. Can he dip into the 205s? That would be midfield, mid field pace so far. In qualifying, but we'll see. It's very bumpy in the braking zones around it. Especially in this last set. Look at that, just trying to get on the power. Just wanted to kick up that rear end. We'll go through Woodcote, very tight, 206.4 in the end. So that just gets worse as it goes on. For oh, Mario. We've been looking to get into the 205s this lap, and then maybe even a 204 in the last lap. We'll see. Because the bike seems to be pretty well suited around it, apart from those old bumps, as you saw in the braking sectors. You're going to do well, mate. Look at that. A second up after the first sector. Surely that can't be right. As this way is perhaps going to be losing time down the straights. Never seems to have the setup right for the top end speed on these bikes, Mario. Well, Somebody's he's really got to adjust maybe for next season. But it doesn't look like he's going to be winning a title this year, but... Hey, maybe he could still get a top five. Decent first year, and then change for the title next, so like he did in Moto3. Like we've seen from McDonald's in the past as well. As he's still 9 10 so he's found that time in that sector. Just by hooking it up. Not running wide anywhere. He almost does. Through farm. As he going to village bit off track there and then into the loop probably the slowest part on the circuit and hard on the power for entry and onto the wind straight so there's a second up a pad but now here come the lap times Vinales Binder to a 3.3 bit about the 204s mate You've got to get right to those 203s now and match his team mate let's see who can do it in this final sector did not have the good exit out of Luffield. Struggling to get on the power. Look how smooth that is in comparison to his previous lap. Now through Woodcote, easily for that. It's going to be a 204. 204.8 is one and a half seconds behind his teammate. So he skipped the 205 stage. Now right, let's see if we can get to the 203. And gain a second somehow on this lap. It'd be good through Magus a bit. I still can't believe how much camber they have in elevation change. They have through Magus and Beckett's. Have you seen Silverstone? See how flat it is. And that's it. Well, I say flat, it's a bit deceiving. 
elevation. As you go through stove very fast, hooking the bike up early. And once again, fast in that first sector, Mario. But it's the other three sectors where he's really got to be searching for the time. And that's not good, running wide through Vail. And then through Club, just check it up, getting on the power. And he's 1.2 down, he's lost all that time. In that second sector. As you go for Abbey and Farm. Flat out this time, can't afford to lift. That's it over for Mayo. As his teammate goes top, Oliviera. 2 or 3.3. .3. Oh, he's let the team down, Mario. He's way down the field. As there's a 1 2, Olivia ahead of Binder for KTM, and then Baldassare in third. And it's Maya Badaya and Verge. And then Shirota Pisini and Alex Marquez in ninth ahead of Remy Gardner. Around the top 10 is Tech Free Machine. Fantastic result from the Australian ahead of Fanati. And Navarro then got Barbera, Marini. Eco of his teammate Lowe's on Lowe's home turf. I'm sure he's happy about that, leading the tip for ahead of Locatelli and Cortoraro. You got Vinales, Aldendale rounds out the top 20 of his teammate Joe Roberts. Look at Mayo on the 8th row alongside Corsia Manzi. Terrible qualifying. You've got Pauli, Bent Snyder, and Granado. Danny Kent on home turf down in 28th alongside Danilo and Fuglini on the 10th row. Then on the 11th row is Nakashima, Kuradin, and Agata. A terrible qualifying for the Swiss veteran. But let's see if. The race is any better. So here's Mario running up at the start then, waiting for the lights to go out. Let's get underway in Silverstone. He's just holding off Banty by his elbows. Good to the first corner. Really pushing his way through. Up into 22nd, alongside the NTS, or should we say former NTS. So he's up to 21st. Oh, he's making moves on Corsi as well for 20th. There's that top 20 position. Down the inside of Lowe's as well. Very aggressive. On this open that now up to 17th. And he's got some slit stream for 16th. You can see a point right in front. There's Locatelli and Guard in the battle. Now you're down the inside into 14th. He's almost back with his buddies. He goes down the inside of Locatelli. As here comes, there's that Ica. Trying to force his way through. So he wants to get it forced to take his own line as he gets into Gardner rejoining. He's back in with Quartararo. Mario back through up into 40 behind Hector Barber, I believe that is. In front of veteran Spaniard. But Mayo by him into 13th. See, old the inside line out the hairpin. Hard on the power. Zika battles back. Barbara does, though. But he's just giving the slip stream to Mayo on this back straight. Takes the inside line into Brooklyn's. Uses a lot of curb. He gets away with it as you've got Marini, Navarro, Fanati. You see any in front battling for a top 10. Well, no, it's just battling for traction on this thing. Almost runs into the back of his former teammate, Fanati, up into 12. Down the inside of Navarro, Marini. Runs a bit wide, but he's into the top 10 ahead of Pacini. Great job for Mario. Next up is Jorge Navarro on his list. Setting up the Spaniard. Through Beckett. And on to the hangar straight through Chapel. What a start. One opening lap. Top 10. Can he go much further? What's well, the race pace on this bike? Well, it's not good through Stoke. There's Verge battling for fourth with Binder as they're getting a bit hairy in front. 
Oh, so is my on the brakes. What is with that? Does he go through? Club, he's down to 13, just ahead of Ike. He's got Pacini in front, Fanati, Gardner. Oh, he did. Back into 10th, just like that. That's how you do it. Once again, using lots of curbing just to help steer this bike around some corners. Or, you know, mess up the corners. And so Mayo, after a superb start, down to 30th. And we can write off this race. So let's try and have fun then for the remaining just under five laps. Is the bike really that damaged that you get overtaken? Just like that in a straight line. We go into Luffield. Looking down the inside, some riders. Down the inside, Nakashima. Sure, he's by Mayo. By a number of riders up into is that 26th. Last man, Z. Punt through Dinero. Up in the 25th. Mayo's really loving everyone this race so far. It's on the third lap. Got Olivia back for sixth with Mir. Is he behind Ben Snyder? Got Danny Kell in front battling for 21st, which is actually good for this season, disappointingly for the Brit. Again, look at this no straight line speed. Look at Agatha. He's on a bloody rocket compared to this lump of coal. In a straight line. That's where he gets the exit. Gotta be careful on the brakes though, in between the NTS twins, is this? What is going on here? Does he use the NTS, but a couple of teammates. Oh man, it's Granado Manzi. Or Granado, should I say. You see how much he's lost out Agatha in that set, so from the hangar straight onwards. Just caught back up to the Swiss rider. Now looking to the inside into Village. As he actually makes a corner for once. Can you get him into the loop? You can get a lot of curbing though. And a very slow exit, that is how you take that corner. As he's got Luca Marini behind him. Oh, to Marini. So here comes Manzi again. Absolute demon in a straight line, the Italian. And here's Pacini as well. It's the would-be point scorers club. Right here, battling on the edges of the top 30. As we go through Woodcoat. Well, what are you doing, Marini? It's my up to 26, a toe 6 for that. That's a poor, poor that time. As we go through Cops. Just getting the back end out, you know, showing off for the fans. as my out. Got Danny Kent battling in front for top 25 place now. So much for battle for the top 20. It was a short lap dream. Let's see if Mario can catch back up. Look at this acceleration. Where is it on this bike? How damaged is this? And look at everyone just slaughter by in a straight line. It's like Mario isn't even there. At least the second half of this race will be entertaining, but I was going to be lucky to be in the top 30 at the end of this race. As he bashes his way past Marini, or does he? And the Brazilian too. Onto the battle back. No wonder that time's so incredibly poor for Mario. This bike's got no straight line speed. Around a track where you need straight line speed. And that's the end of Mario's race then. One to forget.
But considering where he qualified, one we probably should have expected as well. And after the early damage here, somehow his straight line speed just slacked off. Totally slacked off. Like, I have no idea how he lost 10 to 50 miles per hour by sliding at 40 miles per hour. But hey, aerodynamics is a strange thing. Uh, so we've got Baldessari lead ahead of Bagnaya, Marquez, Verge, Binder, Liviera, Mir, Sharotta, Navarro, and Remy Garda around out the top 10 on this Tech 3 machine. As we've got two laps of hot lapping for Mario. Let's see what he can do. Can he even break the two minute bar? You know, no doubt he could do that on this wrecked, battered, and bruised Moto 2. He can't even get through a corner. What is he doing? As you Corsi and Fanati batting for 30, but you don't want to see them too close. Could end like a Conor McGregor fight. Those two next to each other. Well, it doesn't seem to be a mass brawl at the moment. As he's 4.5 behind Danilo. He's got Isaac Vinal, he's batting with Adendal for 17th. Hankata up to 20 seconds ahead of Ben Steiner. Danny Kent getting that top 25 ahead of Kuradin. Or oh, not. Oh, the British dream. Top 25 finish. Not happening. What about Sam Lowe's? Is he bringing home the bacon for the home fans? Getting some points. It's Luca Marini now over Danny Kent. Mario cruising with a lap and a half to go. Because that's the only thing you can do on this bike. There's Corsi back ahead of Fedati. Don't want to see him when he's. Well, when he's even slightly miffed, Fedati. Don't know what you're doing, Corsi, overtaking him all the time. As you go through, left hand up. You can see everyone else in front. As you've got Pasini up to 23rd ahead of Ben Snyder. So we're trying to go round. He's tight caught. You can't even get the bike around the tight corner. Look how damaged this bike is. I'm sure KTM are very happy with their star signing. Just they're coming up to a juncture where they can maybe renew his contract or not. That's a performance like this. Shocking qualifying, which has just ruined his race. Nothing he can do against these opponents when you qualified low down the field. This is why you need to qualify in the top three. Maybe to actually make races enjoyable, otherwise, you're just having this shit show. At least on the final lap of it, as he does a 209.1. He's doing good Moto 3 lap times, Mario. He could win the Moto 3 race at least. Maybe. As Lowe's in 18th, he's not bringing home any bacon. On this race, being outshone by his teammate Ika. What is those even doing on the grid? Over there already. But you're seeing that with Moto2 where it seems to actually be for riders on the way up or for riders who've just been here a long, long time. Like Pacini somehow seems to be performing at this level, but you're seeing other veterans like Agatha now dropping back. In the new breed, the Moto3 breed, just getting stronger coming into this class. You've seen the likes of Juan Mir, Maverick Vindalis, Alex Rins just blow by in a season or two. Being at the top. The guy is actually sticking in Moto and defending their title, titles. Like Tito Abat, Yoen Zarco. I'm sure we see that in the future as well. For riders, when it just ends up being. A bad year to step up to MotoGP. They might want to stick around for another year. Even though it cost Tito about a few years in MotoGP. Now he's finally getting you know, some credit. Rebuilding his reputation on board that Avintia. And doing superb things as well. Getting top 10s in qualifying. And in races now. And getting the results he perhaps should have been when he stepped up. They didn't quite have the equipment to do that. As bad as I wins ahead of Bagnaya and Marquez. Got Verge in fourth. Not a good race for KTM again. Livia and Binder just battling to be in the top five. Not even battling for the podium or the wins. What a low couple of rounds for KTM. Highlighted by 
Mayo McDonald's run on his Moto3 machine at the back here in the Moto2 race. Yeah, you hang your head in shame. Where are you going as well? Oh, he's actually found the track for the first time this race. He did it after the race, but you know, he got there eventually. As Baldazari wins by over a second at a bag, Naya Marcus Verge bitten the head of Olivier. So Marcus does gain some points back in the championship, but Olivier still holds a handsome lead with Mir in seventh. Shorsa Jorge Navarro, a great result in ninth, and Remy Garner cracking the top 10 in his tech three ahead of Ika, Barbera, Corsi, Cortuo, Fenati grabs the final point ahead of Locatelli by just three tenths of a second. Sam Lowe's not getting anything on home turf down in 70 of anyone in Dole. As you realize, Agata rounds out the top 20 after starting on the back row of the grid. But right at the back is Mayo by over 10 seconds and his fastest lap, just a thousandth of a second faster than dinner though. Shows how shit his pace was. Well, at the front, it is Olivia by 75 points ahead of Balder. So he jumps up the second head of Alex Marquez. We've got Sharota Binder, Magnaya Mir, Verge up to eighth ahead of Mayo, whose upward trajectory is now going rapidly downwards. With Bassini in 10th. We've got Navarro up to 30th. Ramigard up to 15th. Hit to Barbara up to 18th. Fanati up to 20th. Lots of movement in the championship as you get nothing, Mayo. I think is what sums up his weekend. What is that? So in MotoGP, Marquez wins ahead of Dovi and Rossi, while in Moto3, Martin wins ahead of Berzecchi and Bastianini. It's all about the Spaniards beating the Italians in those classes. But in MotoGP, Moto2, should I say, it's kind of the other way around. So Britain never happens as we head into Mayo's home round. Rather than Masano World Circuit, Marco Sinche, he didn't need to see this at a better time of the season. I mean, the only way is up, I guess, next time. Let's see if he can actually reward his home fans with a result or actually riding around the track. But so far, Jim, we'll find out next time.